Hey everyone, this is Evgeny back and you're watching a new video in a new series. It's called Land Graph and Land Chain 1.0. So this is about the new framework that came out in October 2025. Basically, you can ask, should I stop watching the previous videos in advanced and introduction series and completely switch to this one? And my answer would be no, because uh, the new version repeats the same patterns, it's the same syntax, it's uh, the same stuff everywhere, like everything is more or less the same, but there are new things like, uh, for example, new concepts like middlewares, which we are watching in this video, and they are really different, so that's why we decided to start a new uh, series, not to confuse you about the syntax, about the imports, about the new stuff. So again, welcome to the new series, Land Graph, uh, Land Chain 1.0 Unpacked. Well, as usual, there is a small note about the uh, supervisor in this video. This is Angry Cat, so if you don't know what are those, if you're curious what are those, then please check the link and the merch is there. All right, so today we're talking about middleware, as I mentioned, and uh, what's that? And basically, let's start from the agent loop. This is the classical representation of React agent, and uh, it's very familiar to you, should be very familiar this time. So there, main thing we have, it's called agent loop. We have a model and we have a tools, and this is a loop. It goes from the action to observation, back to model, and again, action until the model finds the proper answer to the request and then goes to the end. And if you compare what we had in the previous land graph versions, then, uh, well, basically, this is the idea. It's a very basic pattern, right? And if you have to add some additional actions here, whatever, if you want to modify the flow, for example, if you want to react somehow on something, it's, it's, it's very hard to do here, right? Because this is a very basic thing. And the way the uh, lang chain saw this in the previous version of lang graph was introduced some hooks so this was the model uh, we saw it in the previous lessons in lang graph uh, introduction advanced series and basically this is the same model but there are some hooks added here so we have we do have the pre-model hook here we have post-model hook we can have a response format another thing and when we define our graph using the um, high-level API, we can define those as a functions and then immediately they will be injected into the graph. And it was good, it was better than nothing, right? But basically we had a lot of problems with that because uh, whatever you're doing, whatever you're trying to add to your basic graph behavior, you should stop and think about that, like how would I do this? For example, like uh, the pre-graph is not here. For example, the pre-model hook would be executed each time in the loop, right? And there is no way, for example, how you can modify it initially or after the graph is finished. Your response format is kind of this thing, but it's all about formatting back the response. And in order to solve that, the land chain as a company, they decided to update this graph and to introduce much better hook system, which they call middlewares. So the way how it looks like, it's this one. And basically it might look as completely different graph, but uh, it's basically the same React agent because what we have here, we have a start, it goes to the model, then from the model, it can go to uh, two calls, Okay, it's, it's, it's wrong graph here, <laughs> but anyway, the idea is with this one. Uh, it goes to model, from the model it can go to tool, then back to model and tool call again, and then it finishes to the end, right? And we add in several levels of hooks here, again, which are named middlewares right now. So we do have a before agent and after agent hooks. We have the same as previously, before model and after model hook, and also we can wrap tools and model with another middleware. So let's call it this name so we get used to that pretty fast, right? So this is the idea of middlewares. It adds, it provides you points where you can add your specific behavior, which would affect the whole flow, the whole agent loop. And even syntax is different right now because uh, which way previously we would define that for example, there is a parameter which uh, named pre-model hook and you provide a function name here. Now it's way different. We have a single entry point here, which is called middleware. And then we're defining an array of lists of middlewares, different middlewares. And based on the middleware description, the agent or the land graph, land chain knows how to or where to inject this functionality into the graph execution. 
And there are a number of built-in middlewares already, which you can just reuse, or there are specific rules where you can use to create your own middleware if you if you specific if you have a specific use case, for example, which doesn't fit to the standard uh, thinking of one chain. And uh, for the first demonstration in this series, let's just take a look at something built-in, and I will pick the human in the loop middleware. And this is again, this is the way how you can inject your specific behavior to the execution of graph. And we take the same example as we did in the last video, number 17 in Land Graph Advanced. So you'll have the same graph and we'll try to use human look as uh, human in the loop as middleware. So this is the idea. So what do we have here? We have a system prompt, we have a create a agent, and another thing which you may have noticed that the imports are different so for example all this stuff right now this high level stuff is part of one chain framework already it's not land graph anymore so it's kind of land graph is a low level graph structure where you can create a specific flows but based on that structure they created a high level uh, kind of agents components and so a lot of stuff now comes from one chain cell so we have one chain ag agents we import this create agents function we do have this uh, human in the loop middleware which comes from one chain agents middleware and there are a lot of other built in we will look at that later in the next sessions and the rest basically is the same right so what do we have here we have a system problem i mentioned that already we have a create agent function and some parameters are different right now like they were renamed for example, I think system prompt was a uh, system message before something, uh, some other things changed as well. Some stay the same, like model, for example, stay the same, tools the same, right? So what happens here? We're defining a model for GPT-4 or Mini. We're defining a list of tools. And this one I imported already. You saw this multiple times, so I don't want to repeat it again here, but it's a helper class. If I go here just quickly to show you that this tool is also part of Lanchi now, right? But still we have three tools which we defined on our own and this is uh, look up for stock symbol, this is for fetch stock uh, financial data and place in an order. And so the new thing here is middleware level where we define our human in the loop middleware. And here we need to define a cut point where to inject the execution and this one is interrupt on so the syntax is that we are providing the tool name and we are providing a number of options here so what kind of human in the loop and also i'm referring to the last lesson in land graph advanced uh, lesson number 17 where we looked already into that uh, thing and uh, this is pre-select uh, pre like standardized format of human in the loop and this should be familiar to you, right? So that is very simple. Right now, it's everything, the complexity is hidden inside the human in loop middleware. So what we are going to do here, we are allowing to either approve this tool, edit it, or reject it. The rest happens automatically. And you probably should be aware that when you approve the tool, you just allow the tool to be executed. When you reject, you can reject it and provide maybe additional notes if you want, or feedback why you don't want this tool to be executed or you can even edit the parameters of the tool and then run it but with a date list of parameters but from now on it's everything very clear it's hidden the complexity is hidden inside this human in loop middleware and practically that's it that's the whole point and this is our financial advisor agent right and uh, we're going to ask uh, it the financial questions about some test stocks as usual but if we compile and run it let's take a look how it Okay, look at that. It's different right now. Okay, we see immediately that this hook was added or middleware. Sorry, it's middleware right now. So this middleware was added. It's after the model, as this one says, and we immediately can see it in our diagram. So what's happening here? We have a start that goes to model. If model decides to make a tool call, it goes to this uh, after model. For human in the loop middleware, it checks if this is a tool call and this tool call should be protected then it performs some action like it stops and interrupts and this is the usual way we saw it already nothing is new here right and if after the interruption we resume in the graph and we're saying let's proceed it goes to tools and tool is executed goes back to model if we are rejecting then it goes back to model directly with some message why it was rejected and potentially if this thing sees that okay uh, this is the end of the conversation it goes to the end 
Let's give it a try and test it. And this is exactly the same as we did in land graph uh, advanced series, land graph introduction series. Nothing is new here. So we define our configuration with a new thread. We have our agent, we're invoking it for the human message. And maybe one thing here, a human message now is part of land chain again, right? This import is different. And we're asking the same question, please buy us a Tesla stock at the current price. We don't care which one is that because this is a really a learning lesson. So I'm running it. And exactly the same output as always. Like even if you're using LangChain 1.0, nothing's changed here. We have a tool call for Tesla and it returns back Tesla, TSLA. We have another tool call for fetch stock raw data and we have a lot of raw data with Tesla. And then it looks like it stopped somewhere in the middle. And this is correct, right? Because place order, this was the risky function we defined that where we have to take human in loop uh, interruption. And it has arguments like symbol, action by, shares one, and the current price. And if you double check, I'm doing this constantly all the time, the response, the interruption object is there. And let's check the interruption object. Look at that. It's exactly the same from our LangGraph Advanced 17 lesson. It has this specific structure already. It's standardized. This is a really cool thing, right? We have a description like tool execution requires approval and the tool and arguments. And it's allowed to approve, edit, or reject exactly the same as we defined in our uh, middleware. So for now, I'm not gonna uh, do any extra things here. Let's just approve it. So I'm resuming the graph as the old way, as resume. And I'm just saying that my decision was an object of a type of approve, or I can put edit or reject. And also for edit and reject, it makes sense maybe to provide some feedback. Which way for edit, for example, you provide the new list of parameters. For reject, you provide a feedback note why it was rejected. But for now, everything is fine. I'm just approving it. Let's give it a try. Till our function approval. And since we approved it, it finishes. The place order was called. And we have a, some response back that, okay, it was filled. And then goes back to model and model generates for us the final message, which we can see as the last in this thread. And now let's do a quick test. Just give it a try. We run it as a local service using the studio. We will see how it looks in the studio. And my expectation would be that again, we see this uh, middleware diagram shown in the diagram. And then we'll give it a try again in this uh, unified agent, uh, UI agent chatbot that we used previously. So for this studio, I have to run this thing, grab dev, and this is from the studio folder. So I'm here, I'm giving it a try, running it. And we have the graph here, right? It looks exactly the same as in our lesson. So we have a model, it goes to human loop middleware after model and everything as expected. At the same time, as we see it in this studio application or website, it automatically means that we do have a server running in memory. And if I scroll here, for example, we can see, okay, this is the URL uh, for API, we have the UI and API docs, etc., etc. And now what we can do, we can run this chatbot application and pass it the locally run server. So here we are providing deployment URL. This is correct already. And then we have to provide the agent ID, which is a bit different. And this one, I guess, uh, it should be this one. That's from uh, LandGraph JSON from Studio folder. So I'm providing the name of the agent and we continue. So here we are. This is how it looks like. Our agent seems working without any problems. And let's give it another, uh, the same set of uh, questions. And we are starting from buy a Tesla stock at current price. So I'm going to show you all the two calls because it's kind of, you see what's happening there. I'm just sending the request. Okay, and look at that, what happens? Uh, the first lookup stock symbol for Tesla, it returned about TSLA, that it was fetch stock data for TSLA and a lot of data. 
and next thing was place order but this one was considered as risky and we do have a middleware for that so what's happening here we have this dialog for uh, approving and it says okay it can be added or approved so these two actions we allowed already so tsla by one and the price you can change it if you want and click on approve or just click on approve or you can reject it and uh, during the rejection you also can submit your feedback why it was a rejection like for example Like here, I changed my mind. I want to buy two shares of Tesla instead of one, right? And I'm submitting in the rejection of this. Okay, this is my message as a result of tool call. And look at that. Then there is another two uh, call placed for the same parameters, but this time it's shares for two. And the same dialogue, I can again reject it uh, fully. For example, I can say, that well I, I want to stop with that already and then there is no another tool call i can change the parameters here if i want like uh say like let's call 10 for example shares and i can submit it and this is a tool call for 10 shares and uh, the final message from the model was that i purchased two shares of tesla for this price all right, that was it for the video. You've learned what is middleware, how you can use in your long graph and chain agents. And in the next videos, in the next episodes, we will take a look at other built-in middlewares and how they can help you. And it was me, Evgeny. Thanks a lot for watching till the end. I really appreciate it. And I will see, we will see each other in the next video about this long graph and chain 1.0 stuff. Thank you. Take care and bye-bye.